Med friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lexi and today we are doing a very fall themed book haul. Also, I want to show you this. It has nothing to do with the book. Sorry. These are my brand new vice. Like They are so freaking good. I'm gonna be eating that all haul long. Mmm. Mmm. Tis the season to eat candy. So here's the thing. I have acquired a lot of books. I think it's over 35 books, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Okay, so the way I think I'm gonna divide this is by age category as always. So middle grade, young adult, and adult, and we will start with middle grade. The first one, I think, is like the only non-fall-esque one, and that is The Line Tender, and this is by Kate Allen. First of all, the cover of this book is so beautiful. There's like a watercolor illustration depicting a little girl who is sketching sharks, and I think it's just one of the most beautiful covers maybe I've ever seen. Definitely that I've seen this year. This book is about a girl named Lucy whose mother has passed away a few years ago and the book essentially deals with grief. It deals with another event that happens in Lucy's life and I think that event kind of triggers even more of Lucy's undealt with grief. She decides to kind of pursue some of her mother's research I think to feel closer to her mother, but also to process through the new wave of grief that she is feeling. And I really like the concept of that because I feel like not a lot of middle grades explore grief. I've seen quite a few well done ones that can explore like present day trauma or like present day going through something or like something that just happens after a big event like a death. However, we don't really see like the grieving process after that. So I think that's really interesting and I can't wait to read what Kate Allen has in store for me. Next, I picked up the sequel to City of Ghosts and that is Tunnel of Bones. I'm pretty sure that I have hauled this at some point earlier um, on my channel, but I don't remember. However, I can't really tell you what the sequel is about, so I will just tell you what this one's about. So this book is about a girl named Cass, and after a near-death experience, Cass can all of a sudden see ghosts, and then her parents and her end up flying to Edinburgh, where she is kind of involved in this big ghost story in Edinburgh. And it has lots of things that I like. I love ghost stories, I love Edinburgh, and it sounds really cool and perfect for the autumn season, so I can't wait to get to this, and then hopefully pick up this book. Next, I picked up Love, Sugar, and Magic, A Dash of Trouble, and this is by Anna Mariano. This is about a girl named Lenora, who goes by the nickname of Leo, and her mother and sisters work in a bakery. One day, she comes down and accidentally sees them putting magic into their baked goods and learns that she comes from a long descendant of witches. So the entire thing is kind of about her like discovering her powers. It involves baked goods. I think she's trying to help out one of her friends. So it sounds really, really cute, cozy, and perfect for this time of year. Next, I picked up Scary Stories for Young Foxes. And to my understanding, this is basically just scary stories about foxes. And I think a papa fox is talking to his children foxes and trying to scare them, but it's supposed to be kind of creepy and kind of cozy. And I picked it up because I am really in the mood for that, but I'm also always down to read about a fox because they are like my favorite animals in the entire world. Next up, I bought Coraline by Neil Gaiman, and I have been wanting this book for such a long time. I am so excited that I bought it. So I feel like most people know what Coraline is about, but just in case you don't, it's about a little girl named Coraline who discovers a little doorway. When Coraline goes into the doorway, she learns that she has a second set of parents but they have buttons for eyes and they want her to sew buttons over her eyes which sounds so creepy. This is supposed to be really cute, but also kind of creepy. And I am really in the mood to be a little bit creeped out because it's fall. I've actually never seen the movie for this, so I think I'm going to read this and then watch the movie and kind of like see which one I like better. But yeah, I'm really excited for this. Next, I have A Tale Dark and Grim, and this is by Adam Gidswitz. And I am so excited to read this. So this is a dark, 
dark retelling of Hansel and Gretel. And apparently Hansel and Gretel decide to walk out of their fairy tale and into nine others and every single fairy tale is filled with lots of creepy scary things that they have to escape. And it has so many elements that I love. It's got the creepy vibes, it's got the sibling dynamic that I love, and it's got dark fairy tales. So absolutely yes for every single thing. And then the last book for this category is Constable and Toop, and this is by Gareth P. Jones. So this is about a boy named Sam Toop, and Sam Toop can actually talk and see ghosts in Victorian London. I don't know a ton about this book going in. All I know is that Sam is apparently the only one who can save all of these ghosts in London from extinction. So we've got a boy who's actually trying to save a bunch of ghosts, and I'm so here for it. Okay guys, let's move on to YA now. The first book that I have here is Descendant of the Crane, and this is by Joan, is it he? He? I'm really sorry, but it's by Joan H.E. So this is about a princess named Hesina whose father has just been found dead and she is now forced to be a queen of her country, which she doesn't really want to do. She's pretty shy and she tends to shy away from her responsibilities at the crown in general. Um, now she has to juggle being a queen with figuring out if something actually happened to her father if it was planned and by who, if so. So it sounds really interesting, sounds like lots of political um, conspiracy things going on in her world and I can't wait to find out more. The next book I bought is actually kind of an older book but I have not read it yet and it's called Autobiography and this is by Christina Lauren. So this is about a boy named Tanner who desperately wants to be an author and he decides to go to a writing retreat where he may or may not start to develop feelings for one of his writing mentors. This book has LGBTQ plus themes, I believe specifically a male male relationship, um, although I haven't read it, but I, th I think it's pretty clear that they become a couple somehow in this book. The next book I picked up was Sorcery of Thorns, and this is by Margaret Rogerson. This is about a girl named Elizabeth who actually grows up in a library where they keep sorcerers' grimoires, and she grows up thinking that sorcerers are bad inherently and that she should stay away from them. And then one day there is a little bit of a conspiracy where she's kind of caught up in the middle and she has to clear her name. And the only person she can turn to is a sorcerer. I think they kind of go on this little adventure together and she might develop some feelings for him. So, yeah. The next book I picked up is a thriller, and it is The Cheerleaders, and this is by Kara Thomas. I've heard some mixed things about this, but I really, really wanted to read this anyways because it sounds really creepy, and <laughs> I'm really into that right now. I, I wanna read some thrillers. I wanna read some scary things, not, not too scary but you know, kind of scary. So this is about a girl named Monica whose sister was a cheerleader and she tragically dies. And then soon every single cheerleader on that squad eventually dies in some tragic way as well. But Monica is convinced that it was not an accident. And so I think the whole thing is kind of like a mystery trying to figure out what happened to all of these girls and if everything was a coincidence or, if somebody killed them. Anyways, I'm excited. So the next book that I picked up is super cute. Um, it's actually the second volume and it's called Heart Stopper Volume Two. I've read this, I've cried from this, I've loved this. So this is volume two, but Heart Stopper Volume One is about Charlie and Nick, these people right here, who become friends and then eventually kind of start to develop feelings for each other. It is a male-male romance and it is so Hufflepuff, like the entire relationship will just make you like, I don't know, it, it will make you feel things because they are so cute together and so sweet together and it was so just perfect. Like such a sweet, beautiful, happy little book. And I loved volume two just as much. The next one is a semi Definitive list of worst nightmares and this is by Crystal Sutherland. So this follows a girl named Esther whose family has been cursed ever since her grandfather met and ran into death. And the curse basically is that every single one of them will die by their greatest fears. And so the family kind of lives in fear of their greatest fears because they don't wanna die by their greatest fear. I've said fear like a million times. I think Esther kind of potentially meets a love interest a boy and the boy is going to try to help her break the family curse. Sounds really cool. Also sounds perfect, again, for this time of year, curses 
unlucky stuff, death, wow, that's really dark. But yeah, it sounds actually really cool and I can't wait. Next, I actually have here two Anna Marie Macklemore's. I've never read her before and I've heard from a lot of people that I will probably like her writing because she is all about magical realism and that's my favorite thing to read. So I picked up Wild Beauty and I picked up The Weight of Feathers. So this is kind of a Romeo and Juliet type of vibe. It's about two families who are basically traveling performers and they are competitors for different shows. There is magical realism in here, I guess. A son and a daughter from each family ends up falling in love and we kind of follow their journey and it sounds really cool. I actually love all of the themes in there. I've heard mixed reviews on this one, but I had to pick it up anyways because it sounds really cool. And then the next one is Wild Beauty. So this is about a girl named Estrella and her family who are all cursed. The people that they fall in love with end up disappearing until one day a mysterious boy appears on her family's property and he doesn't remember his past or who he is and Estrella's grandmother believes that he might be the key in helping to solve her family's curse. Sounds really cool. Next, I've picked up The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. I actually bought this one over the summertime. I just haven't hauled it yet. But yeah, this is also in my five star predictions video, which I think I filmed quite a few months ago. Anyways, so this is about a girl whose mother has just committed suicide and she believes that her mother has actually turned into a bird. So she decides to travel to Taiwan to reconnect with her grandparents and then try to find her mother in the form of this bird. Again, this is magical realism. I've heard that there are quite a few triggers for this book, that it's very sad, um, but that also it's very lyrical and beautiful and the descriptions are great and that of course, a lot of the descriptions have to do with different colors. So it sounds really interesting and super unique and I can't wait to read it. Next I've got The Wise and the Wicked and this is by Rebecca Podos. So this particular book is about a group of witches who have migrated from Russia to America and their power has been diminishing over the years. The one thing however that they can still all do is they all receive a vision of how they will die and then each of them is kind of not cursed but they end up dying exactly the way their premonition says they will die until Ruby's aunt ends up dying a different way than her premonition. And so it kind of throws everyone into a tizzy because then they start to believe that they can possibly change their fate. So I think there's a lot of questions in this book about like free will versus fate and do we have control of our own destinies or are certain things written in the stars? Sounds really cool. I've also heard that this is more reminiscent of magical realism than like straight up fantasy and that is so my jam. So I can't wait. It's the perfect time to pick this book up. Definitely on my TBR like for this month. I can't wait to read this. Next I have The Devouring Grey and this is by Christina Lynn Herman and I am so excited to read this. So this book is about a girl named Violet who actually moves to a place called Four Paths where she accidentally unleashes a monster and she has to team up with two other new friends to help defeat the monster and thus defeat the Devouring Grey. And if that is not right, I am so sorry. <laughs> Explaining this book has been really hard. The next book that I picked up was Hey Kiddo by Jarrett J. Krasaka. I've actually already read this. This was actually for my Young Adults Course Material course, but I wanted to mention it because I think it's actually completely stunning. It's this gorgeous graphic memoir that has these beautiful hues of like different grayscale and then pops of orange in it. This is all about Jarrett's childhood and how he survived a parent who was very dependent on drug use and then how he has connected with his grandparents and how his grandparents supported him even though they themselves struggled with substance abuse as well. So it was a really interesting and awesome read. It was super fast and the artwork was stunning. Next is a book that I have been hearing tons of great things about and that is The House of Salt and Sorrow and this is by Aaron A. Craig. This is a dark retelling of the 12 Dancing Princes tale so if you're unfamiliar with that one that's where like these princesses kind of go to a ball every single night but it's like actually really dark not good like it's not like necessarily a great place this one specifically centers around a protagonist named Anna Lee whose sisters are mysteriously dying and I think she has to try to figure out what's really going on and if her family is cursed or not this sounds really good it's supposed to be kind of 
of scary and atmospheric actually and like kind of chilling. It takes place by a man or by the sea and it's just got all of the spooky cool vibes that I'm like really looking for this fall season. So yes. <laughs> Next is a book called In Other Lands, and this is by Sarah Reese Brennan. And look at the cover, this is so beautiful. So this is about a boy named Elliot, and on a field trip, Elliot actually goes over a wall and discovers that he is in a new place called the Borderlands, and it's kind of like this fantastical, magical world. He ends up going to a magic school, and I think it's just kind of following his journey at this magic school. I believe there's like multiple years over in this magic school in this text. It's cool too because it is LGBTQ+. I think Elliot is bisexual, that's what I've heard. And so it's got a lot of cool elements that I'm into. I'm really into the whole magical school trope. I'm into the chosen one trope, the other worlds trope. It just sounds super cool and I can't wait. Next is a book I picked up because of my friend Allie who alerted me to it and it sounds amazing. And it's called Serpent and Dove and this is by Shelby Morin. So I don't know a ton about this book. All I know is that it is about a witch and a witch hunter and they fall in love. And as soon as Allie told me that, I was like, sold. I will go to Barnes Noble today. The next book is a book called The Bone Gap, and this is by Laura Ruby. I actually picked this book up a couple of months ago. I think I bought it during the summertime, but I don't think I've hauled it yet. And I don't know a ton going into this. I know that it is magical realism, and that it's about a place that has lots of gaps in it, and people fall into the gaps. And then the gaps lead them to other worlds. I didn't need to know anything else. I just bought it. And then finally, I picked up We Walk the Sky, and this is by Lisa Fielder. And this follows two different alternating perspectives. It follows Victoria, who has just escaped an unstable home and run away to the circus, and her granddaughter, Callie, who is just leaving the circus at 16 years old when her mom gets a new offer, I think, for a job. And I think it kind of shows like how parallel their lives are, even though they're very different. And it sounds really cool. I've also heard that there's like lots of whimsical elements in this book. Okay, so that's it for all of my young adult. Let's move on to my adult books. So first I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the only new adult book that I have in this pile. And that is Red, White, and Royal Blue. I've talked about this a lot. I read this for the Reading Rush, which was at the end of July, but I haven't hauled it yet and it's really good. So I just wanted to mention it again really quick. This is by Casey McQueeston and it follows two boys who end up falling in love, Henry and Alex. Henry is the Prince of England and Alex is the son of the President of the United States who in this reality is actually a woman. Does that make sense? So like the President of the United States in this book is a woman, not Alex, Alex is a guy. Okay, and they end up falling in love and the entire book kind of follows their like complexities and the dynamics of their relationship. It's really cute, it's sexy, it is really, really wild, like super funny. Um, just really, really great. It has like a lot of great commentary on being LGBTQ, I think. It has just lots and lots of really great, awesome things in it that I think a lot of people would enjoy. So I highly recommend it. It is definitely not YA though, it's definitely new adult because the sexy times are pretty graphic, so. Next is a book that everybody has been talking about, and I mean everybody, and that is Gideon the Ninth, and this is by Tamsin Miri. I hope I'm saying the name right, I'm not really sure. Look at how just amazing this book is though, like black edges, that cover. So there's one sentence on here that I have been reading anytime I talk about this book, and I'm just gonna continue to do that. It says, lesbian necromancers explore a haunted gothic palace in space. How could you not want to pick that book up? Like, it just sounds so epic. So, I can't wait to read it. I'm ready. Next is a book that I'm so excited to be holding in my hands, and that is The 10,000 Doors of January, and it's so beautiful. Look at this book. This is about a girl named January who finds an old book in a palace, and it turns out that the book can access thousands of different worlds on each page, and 
I'm trying so hard to not get overly excited for this book. I, I'm really trying, but that is one of the coolest premises I've ever heard. And I just, I really, I wanna read it. I wanna read it right now. Next I have The Flat Share, and this is by Beth O'Leary. And this is a book that I started, but I have not finished. I actually started it for The Reading Rush. And it's about a girl who breaks up with her boyfriend and needs an apartment ASAP. So she finds an ad that basically says that they will be sharing a bed and a flat, but they won't ever see each other because the guy who she's sharing the flat with works nights and she works in the daytime. So basically like one of them leaves and then the other one comes and they both communicate by leaving letters for each other. And I think they start to fall in love with each other through the letters, which sounds awesome. Next is a book I've already finished and it was so good. It was so good. And that is Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff. And oh my God, this book just came out. I didn't tap it as much as I thought. I have like three tabs in here because have you ever just been reading a book and you're so enthralled that you like lose track of literally everything else that's going on. Like I meant to tab this. I think I'm gonna have to reread it and tab it because I wanted to tab it, but I just couldn't focus on anything other than the story. Like I kept forgetting to like drink water and like eat and stuff because all I wanted to do was read Dark Dawn and it, it blew my mind, it was so good. This is the final of a trilogy by Jay Kristoff and it's the like Nevernight trilogy um, starring Mia Corvary. Basically it's just about this girl whose family has been wrongfully murdered and she decides to train to become a badass assassin so that she can take vengeance for her family and for everyone who has wronged her. It's so good, it's so epic, it's wonderful. I highly recommend it, it's, it's really good. It's so dark and gritty and graphic and violent. Things that I would necessarily like lean towards, but like it was just so well done and snarky and funny. I love this book. Oh, also, uh, not a lot of people are saying this, but this is an LGBTQ plus book as well. There is a female female relationship in this series. Next is a book I bought. I'm gonna be honest for the cover and that is Jane Eyre. I've been seeing these covers everywhere and I've been wanting them for a while so I decided to buy the one for Jane Eyre because I've always wanted to read it. I've been spoiled for the ending but it's my own fault because it's a classic and it's really old so it's fine. Um, and look at how pretty it is. This is just about a girl named Jane Eyre who is an orphan and she's very smart. She ends up working for a man and here's like mysterious bumps in the night and she kind of has to figure out what's going on. There's like a love story and it's about like resilience and lots of interesting things and it's a classic, so I can't wait to read this. <laughs> Next is a book that I've actually been buddy reading for forever and I believe everyone else has finished except for me which is not shocking to anyone, and that is City of Brass, and this is by S.A. Chakraborty, and I love this cover so much. So I'm almost done with this. I think I have like less than 100 pages to go, and I have mentioned it in a couple of my vlogs before, but I haven't hauled it yet. I don't think. This is about a girl named Nari who is living in Cairo, Egypt, and is essentially like swindling people, pretending basically that she's healing them. One day she accidentally summons a genie and it kind of sets her into a path of self-discovery, like who is she? She goes on this big quest and this huge adventure. She might have magical powers if so like where does that come from and who is she? I think I've said that twice. But yeah, it's really interesting. It's like very fantastical and like well-written and very atmospheric. So I actually think this would be a perfect one to pick up for the fall time. It really puts you in the center of all of this really awesome high fantasy stuff. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this book and I can't wait to finish it. Next is a book I've heard lots of people talk about here on booktube and that is Middle Game by Shauna McGuire, which I think will be perfect for the fall spooky time vibes. So this is about two twins, Roger and Dodger, and their father. All I know is that their father figure has kind of like helped influence them to be magical. I think he's trying to make them so that they are gods. And I think he wants to use their power for his own gain. And apparently that's like not a good thing. That's what the flap says. So I'm really excited. It's a very interesting and unique premise and I've heard it's really dark, 
which I'm all about. <laughs> Next, we have an adult thriller. I don't read a ton of adult thrillers, but I have three here. I'm trying to be brave and branch out a little bit this Halloween. And so the first one I have here is Dark Matter, and this is by Blake Crouch. I've picked this book up several times in the bookstore because the premise sounds like something I would want to read. And then I look up reviews on Goodreads and people say it's terrifying and I put it back because I'm like, oh, I don't want a scary book but I'm gonna be brave and try to read it. So this is about a physics professor named Jason who leaves his wife and son, I think, just to go on a walk, and then something hits him, and when he wakes up, he's a totally different person. He is in a world where he's like a famous genius in physics. He's never gotten married, he doesn't have a son. And so he kind of has to figure out what's going on. He has to figure out if he dreamed the other reality, if he has somehow fallen into a different reality, if something more sinister is going on than just that. I don't know, but it sounds really cool. It's, I, I just, I like love alternate reality and science-y books so much. So I think I'm gonna love this, but I've just heard it's really scary and I'm kind of low-key terrified of this. So we'll see. Next, I have another book that a lot of people here on BookTube have said is really excellent, and that is Night Film by Marisha Pessel. And I'm really excited about this one in particular because it has lots of like mixed media in it, which I think is pretty cool. It's got like newspaper clippings and like notes and pictures and stuff. I've actually read another book by Marisha Pessel this year, and it was called Special Topics in Calamity Physics, and that was a five out of five stars. I've been wanting to read more Marisha Pestle since I finished that, and I really can't wait to pick this up. This is supposed to be a scary book, and it involves like a suicide that might not really be a suicide, a murder mystery, learning about like the occult in Hollywood, and all that stuff sounds really perfect and atmospheric and spooky, so yes. And then my very last book for this book haul is the Turn of the Key, and this is by Ruth Ware. This, I think, might be my scariest book, but I'm not sure. I've heard that there are some paranormal elements to this book. It is kind of like a murder mystery. It's about a nanny whose children that she was like taking care of are all found dead, and she is the person blamed for this, and she's in jail writing to her lawyer, and we're following all of her letters, and she says that she's not a perfect innocent person, but that she didn't do this and she's kind of explaining to the lawyer what really happened. It's supposed to be kind of gruesome and gritty. This sounds terrifying, but I, I'm i interested. I've, I've always wanted to try reading a thriller, so let's go. And that's it! Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I know that this has probably been a pretty lengthy haul, but yeah, I hope maybe you've got some ideas for things that you might want to pick up during the fall spooky season. Are there any books right now now that you are dying to read this fall. If there are, please let me know down in the comments. I love you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and a very cozy, spooky season. And until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.